Hello everyone. Welcome to the session number 11 on working with NumPy as part of the training program on introduction to Python programming and applications in water resources sector. NumPy or numerical Python is a fundamental package for scientific computing in Python. It lies at the heart of many other uh, Python data science packages like Pandas and other third party packages which are useful for dealing with uh, data. We thought of keeping a session on NumPy covering the basics before moving forward with the session on handling raster data using Python. Uh, in the previous sessions, we uh, already dealt with uh, handling uh, vector data using GeoPandas uh, package, which has dependencies on Shapely and other packages. Uh, Shapely provides for geometry objects such as point, multipoint, line string, multi line string, polygon, multi polygon. And these geometry objects uh, are not associated with any uh, coordinate reference systems. But we saw how to read uh, data uh, from a CSV file and then create a pandas data frame and then how to generate a geo data frame and write data into a shape file by associating a, a CRS coordinate reference system. We have seen functions uh, 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 like read uh, file and to file would support a variety of formats. Uh, in the last session, you have uh, we all, uh, we have also seen uh, data visualization using matplotlib in Python uh, by a guest faculty from IIRS. All these packages, pandas, uh, numpy, geopandas, matplotlib, they have extensive documentation and there are tutorials for beginners to get started with. Uh, once you complete this training program, please explore uh, the documentation, explore the tutorials and uh, to further build your competencies. Help is always available uh, if you look for information online. Um, now let us cover the basics of NumPy in this session. We are aware of two uh, types of data models uh, in geographical information systems, the vector data models and raster data models, which are used to represent uh, the real world objects. Uh, vector data models, we have seen the points, lines and polygon uh, uh, objects, uh, which are uh, um, uh, which have sharp boundaries between them. Whereas in case of um, in case if any parameter varies spatially in a continuous manner, such a parameter is better represented in raster data format. For example, all hydrological parameters associated with the hydrological cycle, whether it is rainfall or whether it is soil moisture or whether it is evapotranspiration, all the such data, uh, all, all such parameter um, are better represented in raster data format, which are stored, uh, capt are captured in square uh, tiles, as square tiles in where the data is stored as numerical array of rows and columns. And therefore it is a two dimensional array. So raster data sets are stored as numerical arrays of rows and columns um, with each pixel representing the space and the value of the parameter. For example, if you take the uh, digital elevation model, you have each pixel associated with the, the its location, la latitude and longitude, as well as the value of the elevation associated with that location. Similarly, if it is a satellite image, ima which has been, um, if, it is, if, the, if, it, uh, if a satellite sensor captures the reflectance in any band, single band of uh, uh, electromagnetic uh, spectrum radiation, and uh, it, if, it, uh, if the captured reflectance is stored in that pixel, and if it is a processed product, uh, like uh, ET evapotranspiration can be calculated as uh, using surface uh, energy balance models. So each pixel will be having a value of evapotranspiration associated with that uh, pixel. So that, that in that case, we have two dimensional numerical arrays. When we have more than, when we have multispectral imagery, or uh, when we have more than one uh, band, then these multiple multiple arrays uh, of the same size, um, which are called bands, um, are um, collected together, and this collection of the bands become a 
three dimensional array with the third dimension being the number uh, 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 the uh, associated with the band the band indexing unlike in case of other uh, indexing in in python band indexing here in, in the case of raster data files it, it it starts with one so you have uh, a series of bands uh, of same size put together one uh, after another in a, like a stack it representing a three dimensional array containing uh, data with each array being with each uh, band being a two dimensional array uh, of rows and columns so while for vector data it is enough to know the spatial reference system uh, the vector data is stored in form of uh, vertices with the spatial data um, so coordinates are known for raster data you need to know the pixel size the coordinates of the horizon and the amount by which the data set is rotated uh, that is fi in transformation we call they are needed to determine the rest of the coordinates um, so if we know the or horizon or, or uh, if you consider the top uh, top uh, left most corner as the horizon and if you know the size of the pixel and if you know the orientation of uh, this uh, array you can calculate the coordinates of the remaining points coming to the numpy module of python uh, numpy uh, which is a short form of numerical python it is an open source fundamental package for scientific computing with python it lies at the heart of many uh, python uh, libraries or packages for data science for example we have seen the pandas and geopandas uh, and we have also seen visualization uh, through matplotlib some examples so uh, uh, other than that the data exploration uh, we have there are other uh, 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 packages for uh, data uh, modeling data evaluation they most and uh, almost all of them they they uh, at, at their heart lies numpy which may they all of them make use of numpy functionalities um, when we see some of the functionalities of the numpy you will realize that we have already used them in the case of pandas and geo pandas uh, numpy as I said it lies at the core of the rich ecosystem of data science libraries um, then uh, when we are talking of uh, raster data what we said is we uh, raster data is represented in a uh, numerical arrays uh, two dimensional if it is single band or multi dimensional uh, uh, 3d array in case of multi uh, spectral data raster data set now uh, uh, to handle the uh, the such raster data sets in the form of numerical arrays uh, numpy a module will be very handy uh, as it is uh, it efficiently deals uh, with uh, numerical arrays um, uh, and uh, it deals with them in a faster way than the inbuilt uh, python data structures further we have said that numpy is designed for processing large arrays of data and therefore useful for handling raster data sets now uh, at, at the core of numpy is the nd array object which stands for n dimensional array object which encapsulates the n dimensional arrays of homogeneous data types with many operations being performed in compiled code for performance now what it means is nd arrays uh, the uh, the the data is stored uh, in numpy the data is stored in the form of uh, n dimensional arrays which have uh, same data type uh, elements uh, are of uh, same data type therefore the size of the um, um, the size remains the same um, unlike in the case of python built in sequences where you keep adding elements uh, with, uh, of different data types the size keeps ch changing uh, and then um, the code is performed in a compiled co uh, code uh, for performance so it co it combines the best of both uh, uh, python language as well as uh, the compiled code the c code in the background now what um, even if you are giving the inputs in the form of python sequences they are converted uh, to numpy arrays before uh, processing and then it uh, the results are also displayed sometimes in the as numpy arrays now the utility of uh, numpy arrays when it comes to one, one thing is size and another thing is uh, performance fastness is it is because uh, many mathematical operations they can be conducted in num using numpy arrays to uh, simple uh, uh, vectorization uh, instead of writing complicated uh, uh, for uh, instead of iterating over the elements of uh, built in uh, python sequences using complicated nested for loops if and else statements 
no, the main differences between NumPy arrays and standard Python sequences are NumPy arrays have a fixed size at the time of creation and um, unlike the Python built-in sequences, the elements in them are to be of same data type, therefore they have the same size and uh, they, ma they facilitate advanced mathematical and other operations on large numbers of data. Uh, a plethora of growing uh, of, of scientific and mathematical Python packages uh, are using them. With uh, NumPy arrays, the code is more concise and easier to read and resembles standard mathematical notation. For example, if we are, uh, if there are two arrays of same size, A and B, um, and if you want to do simple sum or product, element by element operation can be conducted in NumPy in simply by writing A plus B or A into B. Uh, as in the case of normal mathematical notation which is uh, which is not the case when it comes to python inbuilt sequences you have to loop over the elements you have to write lo for loops and you have to write condition if, if there is any kind of requirement of conditional statements it, they will also come so uh, so this uh, this uh, simple vectorization uh, with uh, that the code uh, um, is much concise whereas in case of python uh, normal uh, built-in sequences the code would be littered with inefficient and difficult to read for loops as such the uh, logic wise there is nothing wrong but but um, whenever you are dealing with uh, big uh, data uh, large uh, arrays um, as it happens in case of raster analysis when you when in case if you are having multi multi uh, spectral uh, multi-dimensional arrays um, stack of many uh, two-dimensional arrays when we have to do operations when you are when you write uh, um, uh, when you go by uh, standard built-in sequences of python they occupy much space and also the for loops they uh, they uh, they consume much of the memory uh, as well as the computational power so they the it, the process will become slower um, uh, um, maybe uh, the the difference may be in matter of few, few uh, milliseconds to seconds but uh, when with the quantum of the data increasing uh, the you will realize that nd arrays are more efficient now let us see some examples of numpy uh, module uh, in the jupyter notebook i have initiated the jupyter notebook uh, from uh, my anaconda prompt uh, you can also do it from anaconda navigator uh, after selecting the environment uh, activating the environment python dash wrm you can launch uh, jupyter notebook in your command prompt also you can run the command conda um, activate uh, python dash wrm and then you can type jupyter notebook to launch um, jupyter notebook uh, then uh, as usual the a, a default window will open up pointing to the home directory you open uh, you create a new Jupyter notebook and save it rename and save it So I have created a new notebook. Now to start with, I have to import the NumPy module and by convention, NumPy module is uh, imported into the script by uh, typing import NumPy as NP, a short form for NumPy. So so the numpy node uh, module has been uh, imported now first we will see how we uh, create uh, 
how do we create uh, numpy arrays uh, n dimensional uh, arrays now uh, uh, it, it can be simply created by passing a list uh, a python list say list 1 i define two lists 1 4 and then list 2 is 5678 so if i pass a list into an np dot array you can check by tab completion what are all options you have so np dot array and then you pass on the list uh, say list one you type a so an array has been created with the elements one two three four now let us check uh, its shape which is a tuple um, it is a one dimensional uh, array uh, and of uh, uh, four uh, elements so it is uh, written in this fashion shape let us check its uh, dimension with this attribute and dim and uh, dim, dim stands for dimension it should return one because it has only one dimension there is only one row and one sequence we have then uh, you can uh, check its data type with this attribute uh, a dot d type which is uh, int 32 so numpy has various uh, ways of uh, a variety of uh, data types int 32 int 64 int 16 int 8 etc the for uh, conserving memory and making calculations faster you need not get into that but you must uh, 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 know that you can even specify the type of uh, uh, data type at the declaration of uh, at the time of creating the array itself now let us uh, create a two dimensional array by passing two lists np dot array which are list one comma list two list of lists so you type b which is a two dimensional array i have created using these two lists and you can again check the attributes of shape two by four two rows and four columns then the dimension and dim which is two and then the data type which is again int 32 then you can create a uh, let us also create uh, another um, uh, list list 3 is equal to let us create a list of floats uh, 9.0 10.0 11.0 and 12.0 okay then let us create a nah, array by passing list 1, list 2 and list 3 in list of lists and you type C so you can see that when you are passing a list of floats um, it has I think the uh, let us check its data type c dot d type it's float 64 as we have passed a list of floats to create a and then is it uh, the dimension let, let's check the dimension 
c dot ndim it is again actually it's not a three dimension it is a it's a two dimensional only we are only passing list of lists in both the cases here also we have passed list of lists because here the just the shape has been changed you can check c dot shape which is three comma four three rows and four columns let us try to create a three dimensional array uh, instead of passing any uh, uh, lists are uh, predefined data we have a simple option by uh, you can um, use this method np dot you press tab and check for arrange and you can look in the help options it is a built-in function arrange in module numpy it returns evenly spaced values within a given interval with the non integer step we also can give which is optional well if you don't give the default start value it is 0 and the step size default size is 1 so it returns an ND array of evenly spaced values so let us uh, check say there are examples np dot arrange uh, 3 it it is exclusive 3 it creates an array of uh, 3 elements one dimensional array 0 1 2 similarly if it is a float then it creates a float uh, a array of floats if you are giving starting index as well as end then it will exclusive of 7 it creates an array and if you are uh, even providing the step it will create a uh, in uh, array 3 and 5 7 is exclusive so we can also like let us check let us create an n dimensional uh, one dimensional array by passing 12 so this is an array uh, including uh, uh, from 0 to 11 uh, excluding 12 you can check uh, the type we haven't uh, specified we we can assign it to d and then you can print d and then you can check d dot uh, d type which is int 32 now we have said that at the time of definition itself we can specify the uh, so let us d is equal to np dot arrange 12 then you can change the uh, data type by simply um, using the function d dot as type you can check d dot as type and use the help option um, which says as you can see here an array of floats is converted into array of integers So let us see d dot as type in uh, brackets you can float say 32 so you you have created an array by changing the data type so you can define an array with the specified uh, data type at the beginning itself you can you can define it this way if 
load 64 sorry and you have to say np dot array d type is you can specify and you have to use the strings yeah and then you can type e which is you can check the type float 64 so this way you can you can uh, create a, an array using uh, pa by passing a list or list of lists or by array uh, by using the arrange function uh, and then uh, you can uh, reshape uh, any array uh, existing array uh, to create an um, uh, uh, a new array of a different shape so you can uh create a new uh, array and reshape you can say it of dimension um, of shape 2 3 4 2 first dimension second dimension third dimension that is uh, in each of the ND array there will be two components having blocks having three rows and four columns and the number of elements are 24 2 into 3 into 4 is 24 yes so let us see yes this is an three dimensional array where uh, which has uh, uh, two dimensional uh, two two dimensional arrays are put together uh, to create a, a three dimensional array you can check its uh, shape which is uh, which returns a tuple two three four and then you can check its dimension which is three the uh, and so we can also create uh, arrays uh, and the arrays by using uh, simple uh, functions inbuilt functions like np dot zeros by giving the shape like say you specify the shape 2 by 2 or 2 by 3 uh, which has to be passed inside the brackets as a separate tuple so a two dimensional two by two two columns and two rows array has been created you can assign it to any variable similarly np dot uh, once will pass the same shape yeah different shape two rows and three columns it's two dimensional array then np dot empty say again two by three it, it creates uh, an array it doesn't uh, create like in case of a list it will not uh, uh, result in an empty uh, list but it it puts some garbage value and which can be reassigned again and again say np dot let us just say 2 by 4 so yeah because in memory there was this is, has been there it is simply giving so you can see uh, np dot empty two two by four uh, um, uh, array which is a two dimensional array of two rows and four columns it has put some garbage values and then you can assign the values now for assigning the values you have you should be able to identify uh, the how you should be able to access the elements now how do you access the elements let us see uh, let us get back to the first array which is one dimensional this one we have uh, um, uh, in the beginning we have uh, seen and we can access any element by passing within the square brackets 
say first number again indexing starts from zero so first element it is it is as if it is a list it behaves in the same uh, fashion and uh, similarly you can zero two three exclusive of three it will print zero one two three exclusive of the index three so it gives an one dimensional array subset of this then uh, you can uh, have this is a two dimensional array now if i want to access the first row of uh, this which will be a n dimensional and one dimensional array you can simply pass on the index 0 which is array 1 2 3 4 similarly you can access any column say 0 1 2 You can simply pass uh, index row index, but you cannot simply pass the column index. It, it, it have to pass uh, for selecting all elements of the row. You can pass simply colon, then comma, then second, uh, uh, the third column that is sec index two. Uh, you can um, pass, and then you will get the array three seven. Similarly. the slicing uh, and subsetting of arrays you have similar options uh, as we had seen in earlier say I'm, I'm, I want everything um, um, excluding the first uh, row every, uh, the, fu uh, the first uh, uh, the, the second row which is of index 1 but however columns I only want uh, uh, these two columns uh, these two so that means indexing 1, 2, 3 excluding. So 1, 3. It should get me 6, 7. Yes. So it is. Uh, now this array. What do you think is the di uh, dimension of this array? It is a two-dimensional array. So we can access a two-dimensional slice uh, fr uh, from a two-dimensional array uh, by uh, uh, stating the ending and uh, ending uh, and starting and ending indices of both the dimensions. Um, we have seen till now uh, how to subset, uh, how to get contiguous values uh, by subsetting. Like, uh, but we can also get uh, discontinuous values uh, by the the same order you pass. Like uh, we have an a, a is an n dimension uh, one dimensional array, and uh, with uh, its element at elements at index zero is one and element at index three is four. If I want four and one in that order, uh, you can simply pass list of lists uh, with indices. 4, uh, 3, comma 0, which will give me an array and di one dimensional array with elements at uh, index uh, 3 and element at index 0. You have the B, which is a two dimensional array, and if I want uh, to, uh, um, if I pass list of lists uh, like 0, comma 0, comma 1. Um, zero comma one comma three. Let us say, yeah. So here, what I am again passing a list of lists: uh, zero, zero, one, zero, two, three. It actually gives me the elements corresponding to the index zero, zero, row zero, uh, and column zero, which is one. 
then uh, row 0 then column uh, 2 that is 3 then row 1 column 3 that is 8 so this way if an array is multi-dimensional you you can provide list of lists with inner list for each dimension uh, then uh, one thing is one important thing is mutability of uh, ND arrays now if you are subsetting any ND array and make changes in that subset uh, the original array also gets uh, it is the change is also reflected in the original array so to preserve the values you have to ma make an independent copy explicitly for example you have this B uh, the, uh, the two dimensional array and now I will uh, take a subset by getting the elements 2 3 and 6 7 i will i, I will uh, pass on let us uh, let me uh, call if g is equal to b then zero row both the rows i would like to have elements then first and second one colon three exclusive which will uh, give me a two-dimensional array with the elements two three and six seven so if I make an assignment the first element by double index notation is also valid here that is if I am changing this element 2 to say 9 then if I print G naturally the assignment uh, uh, you will see the changed value in G 9367 however the same even in B uh, which is its superset of G the uh, it is ref it will it is being reflected so to preserve the values you need to make an independent copy now uh, if uh, two or more arrays have the same dimensions then we can perform mathematical operations and as well as logical operations on them element by element wise which we have spoken in the initial slides that is an advantage offered by NP uh, NumPy arrays uh, so for example uh, let us uh, define uh, two uh, new arrays uh, x uh, two dimensional arrays x m is one two then three four n p dot array So x is a two by two, uh, two by two, uh, two dimensional uh, NP array, two um, D array, and then I will also define y of the same dimension. So I have two two dimensional arrays x and y defined. Now I can uh, perform simple mathematical operations, arithmetic operations x plus y simply by uh, using this notation x plus y, which will do the uh, element wise uh, addition. You can see one minus one is zero, two uh, plus three is five, three plus four seven, four plus three seven. Similarly, uh, you can perform uh, x minus y, um, then uh, x into y, even product minus 1, 6, 12, and two, uh, 1 into minus 1, 2 into 3, 3 into 4, 4 into 3. So you have this array. 
so uh, this is very useful uh, when it comes to band uh, uh, map algebra band mathematics which we will see when we want to identify any features like water body or uh, even vegetation we have indices uh, and we have uh, band uh, band mathematics we have to do uh, where uh, if the bands are of same size which is the case in where when we have multispectral images with different bands and you want to do uh, uh, manipulation with bands you can simply use uh, such operators uh, to calculate indices uh, to uh, so as to identify the uh, features on the earth as per the like ndvi is used for identification of vegetation greenness and then ndwa normalized difference water index for identification of water bodies so uh, th that way so, uh, not just arithmetic operations uh, mathematical operations we can even do logical operations for example you can uh, try with this x greater than y so you will it will uh, result in an array uh, with the corresponding elements are compared like one is one is greater than minus one it is true one uh, then two greater than three is false then three greater than uh, 4 is false, 4 greater than 3 is true, false, true. So you have this Boolean array and you can assign it to any, uh, uh, say, h is equal to x greater than y. You run it again and then uh, you can print h and then you can check h dot d type, which will be a Boolean uh, d type bool. Uh, so uh, you can uh, do that and you can even uh, combine the conditional uh, operators by using uh, and which is ampersand and then or uh, operators uh, just as in the case of pandas which we have seen now uh, uh, if you want ma mathematical matrix algebra uh, um, to be implemented instead of such element wise product then you have to use numpy dot uh, linear algebra submodule and numpy dot lin alg submodule has to be used now we are not concerned about that uh, matrix uh, matrices we are uh, talking only about uh, simple uh, numpy functionalities then uh, this uh, comparison operator this can be used uh, uh, for uh, to implement if else statements in numpy like uh, you can see npy dot where np dot where you have the expression conditional uh, x greater than y and you can print if it is true you can print corresponding value as 1 and if it is false you can print the corresponding value as 0 or you can uh, print the uh, if it is true you pr print 10 if it is false you print 20 now you can see um, wherever there is true the corresponding elements are 10 so if statement the conditional statement then implement this else uh, you you put this value false uh, uh, corresponding elements uh, have the value 20 so this is like an if else uh, statement uh, this can be even even be operated uh, with uh, two uh, 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 arrays in play in the place uh, as values instead of uh, giving specific values provided those arrays are of the same size for example you take a simple i equal to np dot zeros and you specify the dimension and j equal to np dot ones and you specify the dimension sorry so 
Now you can implement uh, this statement np dot where x greater than y then instead of 10 you pass i instead of 20 you pass j so what happens is for corresponding values of this boolean uh, array for true if it is true it takes the corresponding value from i if it is false it takes the corresponding value from j array j so you will uh, uh, because it is true false false true it has to be you you have to you will get an identity matrix 1001 1. let us check 0110 one, zero. Uh, uh, wait a minute yeah because uh, i is zeros np.0s and j is np.1s you will get zeros uh, in place uh, where uh, so what how it executes is it it checks the condition x greater than y so first element first row first column it is true therefore it has to take value from i the corresponding value in i is 0 it will place 0 it is false then it has to take the value from j the corresponding value from j is 1 so it will take 1 so forth so that is about uh, boolean indexing uh, which will be useful then we will uh, uh, be, we should talk about uh, something called nan values masking uh, suppose um, uh, you say uh, you have an a is an array and let me assign the first va value uh, to 0 so a becomes array 0 2 3 4 let me divide each element by 0 and see what happens uh, it is throwing a uh, uh, warning uh, division by 0 uh, however what is uh, more uh, we i want to point out uh, that whenever you are dividing uh, 0 by 0 it will give an uh, in uh, nan uh, it will provide an value of nan and whenever you are providing whenever you are dividing any uh, integer divided by 0 it will provide in inf if it is negative it will be minus inf i guess otherwise it is inf so th uh, this uh, you should know then uh, talking of masking um, whenever uh, you have uh, uh, numpy uh, arrays you can subset with corresponding boolean arrays for extracting and modifying some of the values in an array only with those values which correspond to the true value suppose there are missing values you know the locations of those missing values and you want to avoid them in your uh, uh, calculation you can uh, mask them out you can do the calculation and then once uh, uh, you uh, uh, do the uh, operate complete the operation you can assign uh, it, uh, any no data value to that uh, uh, those uh, those uh, those uh, missing values like gen by convention uh, people assign very large negative values minus nine 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 so uh, th uh, that that can be uh, done so by you using the uh, and and one, once you mask the arrays you can completely ignore certain pixels in the calculation so that they will not interfere in the calculation and you do your calculation and then you can fill with no data value afterwards uh, the, uh, so that uh, that will be useful uh, especially when uh, talking of raster uh, and band math and raster analysis and also if uh, suppose suppose uh, a now it is an array now suppose i assign one uh, value at index 3 is 100 so a will be changed now this is an outlier value suppose if i want to remove that you can simply uh, if you want to exclude uh, uh, such uh, values you can simply uh, use the operations like a less than say only 10 
uh, some threshold value it will generate an array of only those elements removing the outliers similarly uh, if there are missing values you can replace those missing values with average values of the surrounding pixels so many things can be is po uh, they are possible we are not getting uh, much into the detail those uh, details then uh, summarizing a a a array values when you have uh, an array uh, you uh, like a now it is the values are such that now if you apply the sum operation it will uh, or it is same as np dot sum you will get summation of all elements and a dot max you will get the maximum element and a dot min you will get the minimum one zero so uh, th th this is summary uh, this is very simple because it is one dimensional suppose you have a two dimensional array say b which is a, this is two dimensional and you want the sum uh, along the axis there are two axes in two dimensional one is along the columns across the uh, rows which is axis 0 and along the rows across the columns axis 1 the same thing which we had seen earlier where uh, in case of data frames that was that had the basis in numpy itself data uh, pandas had a dependability of numpy but we haven't dealt with numpy in the beginning uh, but uh, now we are dealing with it because we want to use it for uh, you, you you want to have understanding of uh, um, element by element uh, uh, operations for doing raster analysis so array uh, 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 if you have this two dimensional array if i want uh, b dot sum along the axis you can specify the axis is equal to 0 it will return sorry it should be b it should return an array with uh, uh, summation along the columns 1 plus 5 9 plus 6 3 plus 7 4 plus 8 then you can uh, do the same thing along the axis 1 along the rows where it, then you will get 1 plus 9 plus 3 plus 4 which is 17 then 5 plus 6 plus 7 plus 8 26 that is about uh, when, when uh, similarly the same if you want to find out uh, the maximum m dot max axis equal to 0 so maximum it should be 5 9 7 8 and you can check it do we have a three dimensional uh, array no this is also two dimensional let us define c as a three dimensional array np dot array simply one two three four can check uh, C 
which is and the dimension of uh, C which is a three dimension and uh, shape of C which is 2 by 2 by 4 there are two uh, along axis 0 two elements and number of rows in each of the um, array sub array we have two rows and four columns 2 by 2 by 4 so this is uh, the array uh, three dimensional array C defined now if I want uh, to uh, simply check the maximum values along uh, the C dot max Uh, say along uh, axis 0 axis 0 now is uh, you can imagine this as a two dimensional array and this is another two dimensional array which is on the top of this two layers two bands and your axis 0 is perpendicular to the uh, surface of each two-dimensional array so if you check that it will simply give you row and column summaries the cell maximum comparing corresponding uh, elements like 1 and 9 will be compared 2 and 10 will be compared 3 and 11 will be compared 4 and 12 will be compared and you will get is the same dimension uh, uh, array with, uh, you in fact you will get uh, this uh, this uh, as the final output so you will you have the two dimensional array of because the maximum of any element here and corresponding element is 9 so that is when you do this uh, operation along the axis 0 you get row column summaries and if you do it uh, along uh, the axis say axis is 1 comma 2 which you have to pass in a tuple so 1 comma 2 uh, axis 1 is along the columns uh, sorry along the columns yes in a plane along the columns you have axis 1 and axis 2 along the rows and axis 0 is perpendicular to the plane of the each two dimensional array so if we are uh, checking for c dot max along the axis 1 as well as 1 and 2 that means you will get um, lay, layer wise or uh, band wise maximum values So in this layer the maximum is 8 in this the layer, uh, in this maximum is 16 now let us do this for axis 0 and 2 that means along the rows in the plane and across uh, the perpendicular to the plane so that will that should give me uh, we are considering uh, when we considered uh, 1 comma 2 it gave me layer max when I am considering layer and uh, row it should get I should get column max so column max uh, let us see 12 16 axis 0 which is perpendicular then two, 1 is along the column and 2 is along the rows so you, you, will, you will compare this row and this row along 0 and 2 that maximum is 12 and this row and this row the maximum is 16 now do that let us do that for axis uh, 0 and 1 
now that is 0 means layer this is one layer this is another layer and one is across the uh, along the columns so then you will get this as the maximum yes so you will get the column uh, maximum so in that way you can uh, the, the, the similarly you can do the sum along the axis now that is not much of uh, relevance uh, to us for the time being now we can uh, we talked about no data values the missing data uh, suppose you have array a is this much suppose uh, a of 3 it is none you cannot define none Yeah, because uh, in an uh, array, these are uh, numerical uh, only numerical values are allowed. So, to represent in NumPy, the representation is np dot nan. Cannot convert float nan to integer. Okay. See a dot d type. it is int 32 that is the issue actually the np.nan it can only be accommodated in float arrays so let us convert it to a dot as type float 32 then you assign a 3 is equal to np dot nan cannot convert float nan to integer to assign it to a. okay then can we do this let us see because nan a, uh, np dot nan is only accommodated in float arrays yes so you have the nan value there is a missing value which is represented by nan so whenever uh, you have the nan uh, you uh, you operate nan np dot nan with any other uh, integer or with any other thing the result will be nan so, uh, for uh, for example you can see a dot sum now it will it will uh, because one of the element is nan it will return nan to get in order to get the if you want to ignore that nan and get the sum of remaining elements you can pass on this uh, function nan sum a dot nan sum uh, no you have to np dot nansum is the function and you have to pass a inside the attribute so 3 plus 2 plus 0 it is 5.0 so that way uh, so so no data values can be ignored uh, using special uh, functions such as nansum nan uh, similarly there are other functions uh, which uh, will ignore the no data values no data values we can uh, find out the no data values using 
this exp this function np dot is nan and you can pass on a so only one element it will return true others are uh, not nans so these uh, these are useful uh, for masking out the elements uh, which are missing uh, are your nan values as we said earlier you can simply mask out the elements which you want to avoid uh, in, in your calculations and then uh, do the uh, operation and then uh, uh, assign no data value to those specific cells so there are m uh, much more uh, uh, numpy is a very uh, uh, it has uh, versatile uh, applications in various data libraries but uh, we are we as we said in the beginning we our uh, uh, point of concentration is only up to this uh, uh, we have learned about how to create uh, numpy arrays and how to do the math how to how to slice uh, get uh, get elements subset uh, the uh, arrays and get uh, any uh, element or slices and how to do uh, element by element operations using simple math uh, 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 use uh, arithmetic mathematical and uh, logical operators can be used for simple uh, operations uh, element by element and we have seen the boolean indexing which can be used to mask out uh, values and masking uh, will be used uh, to uh, uh, remove uh, the missing values f from any operation and we have seen 0 by 0 division will give you np.nan and G any integer divided by 0 will give you np.inf which are to be avoided when we are doing band math and then finally um, summation using these uh, these uh, uh, functions dot sum dot max along the axis that we have seen so let us move forward let us work with uh, another package uh, for dealing with raster uh, data that is rasterio so let us see some examples of handling uh, uh, raster data um, we will make use of a third party package rasterio that we have installed uh, on the first day uh, using Conda installer, Rasterio. Uh, uh, we will only see uh, basic examples. We will see how to uh, read uh, raster data, how to read it as a NumPy array, and whether we can use of the make use of the functionalities of NumPy array that we have seen uh, to do band math, some mathematical operations on uh, NumPy array. We will just try to uh, explore uh, the very basics. Uh, and you can further uh, go to the website of Rasterio and then uh, check the documentation and the examples provided over there and you can run them on your uh, Jupyter notebook by making suitable modifications. Uh, as we have been saying, this uh, training program is only meant uh, for uh, uh, as it is meant to be a foundational uh, program or introductory program. Uh, geospatial analysis is not actually part of the scope of this training program however we would like you to be aware of various uh, third party packages which are available for doing data analysis and geospatial analysis so let us uh, start um, so uh, there, there, uh, the, for, uh, there is uh, rasterio is based upon gdal which is a geospatial data abstraction library which is written in uh, c++ it is a popular and robust uh, library for reading and writing raster data however because uh, it is uh, not uh, 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 it is in a different language and uh, um, the way the uh, you have been coding uh, uh, from the beginning the way uh, the, the you have seen uh, a very intuitive uh, uh, very easy and elegant syntax so so to carry it forward uh, the rasterio uh, third party package has been uh, designed uh, which uh, internally it works on uh, gdal on the back end uh, gdal it only works uh, to read and write uh, data uh, however um, uh, the interface uh, it it won't be much uh, it is much easier to deal with raster data using rasterio now let us see um, so I have uh, clipped um, the DEM, uh, SRTM DEM uh, 
of 30 meter resolution for Pune region and uh, I have saved it on my system. So the clipped uh, DEM file, I have saved it uh, in this file, uh, in, uh, in uh, data folder as SRTM underscore Pune underscore region. Now uh, let us uh, try to open this file and read uh, the uh, data as NumPy, NumPy array. I will create a heading. First of all, you have to import uh, the Rastereo uh, third-party package into the Python uh, in, uh, in, into your script using this um, command import Rastereo. Along with that, I will also import other uh, useful um, modules which are uh, part of the standard Python library for file handling and file path handling like path lib, then I can use OS then import glob I may or may not make use of all these uh, modules however I am importing all of them then I have to define a file path to my SRTM DM clipped file which is stored in my system I will initiate uh, I will initiate it uh, with the uh, pathlib.path.home which will point out to the home directory and then I have the folder python wrm and subfolder data wherein I'm, my file is saved so I will use the forward uh, operator forward slash operator and I will define the file path python wrm then data the name of the file dot taf you can check what has been created fp underscore dm which is which has created an windows path to the um, file and the SRTM DEM uh, clipped file then in Rastereo there, uh, there are uh, functions for opening and reading raster data files you can check them by typing period and then press tab there is an open uh, function you can use help option to uh, read about what the function does so it, it is a help on function open in module rastereo it takes uh, file path and other parameters are optional the default mode is read mode it returns a dataset reader or dataset writer object to open a geotiff for reading using standard driver discovery and node directives you have the example scripts so we can uh, then because now we have the file path defined you can simply pass it to rastereo.open which creates a dataset reader object you can assign it to a variable DEM and then you can check the type of DEM which is rastereo.io.datasetreader reader. Now, uh, now you have opened the file now before reading the data let us uh, check the uh, metadata of this raster data file uh, you can make use of the attribute meta dm dot meta 
so you can see uh, the metadata related to this uh, file uh, the driver is gt uh, G, uh, geotiff which is, which means the format the raster data format then the data type is integer 16 here the values of the elevation are stored in the in the, as integers then no data none width 6711 height 5626 it is a two, it is a um, and the, the number of uh, rows uh, are um, 6711 and the number of uh, columns no no number of ro uh, rows are 5626 and number of columns are 6711 the count is one which means there is only one band here uh, there, uh, as such there are no bands there are there are elevation values stored in the grid then the coordinate reference system EPSG 4326 uh, which which is the WGS 84 uh, datum then the transform which has um, the leftmost left topmost coordinates of X and Y uh, which are 73.34 uh, and 19.41 longitude and latitude and then the pixel size which is in degrees you can convert and it will come out to be around 30 meters uh, one degree is approximately 110 kilometers so you can uh, multiply by 100 then in kilometers from kilometers to uh, meters you can multiply by 1000 it is around uh, it will come around uh, uh, 30 meters so that is about the uh, metadata you can access these uh, properties individual properties by uh, calling the attributes like dm dot driver gtif uh, geotiff then dm dot height dm dot width dm dot crs epsg4326 then dm dot bounds this is the bounding box uh, which has defined uh, um, within which you were um, uh, the SRTM uh, your, your da raster data file uh, values are uh, there so you have the coordinates of uh, uh, latitude and longitude of uh, uh, the leftmost uh, um, left uh, uh, longitude and right side uh, low uh, right rightmost uh, uh, value of y and then the x value varies between 17.89 uh, degree north latitude and 19.41 degree uh, north latitude so that is about uh, various attributes of your uh, raster data file which you have uh, uh, read uh, you, which you have opened using the rasterio.open function then we can uh, try to read the values uh, in the file in the raster data file you can uh, name and variable elevations then dm is your uh, file which uh, uh, raster data file uh, which in which, which was uh, in the read mode which you have opened dot read because there is only one band you will pass on the band number one so here what we have done is initially we have used rasterio dot open uh, function to open the file uh, it has just opened the file and read the uh, the properties the raster uh, data properties it hasn't read any data uh, now uh, we are using the dot uh, read function uh, to read the values in by passing on the uh, band and storing them uh, the uh, in the uh, as, uh, in the variable uh, in the defined variable of elevations you can check the type of elevations now which you will find it to be a numpy array yes so now the data has been read the raster data has been read into a numpy array n dimensional array you can check the shape of uh, this array 
the attribute dot shape which uh, you will find the number of rows 5626 height as, uh, then the number of columns 6711 which is the width of the your uh, file raster data file now uh, similarly you can check the dimension and dim at attribute which will be two it is a two dimensional array you can also check the values a summary of the values which are uh, in this two dimensional array by passing on dot max the maximum value elevation uh, value uh, in this uh, in, the, in that uh, srtm dm file uh, is 1483 meters then you can also get the mean value which should be around 600 meters uh, as the region is around Pune yes it is around 606.61 and you can check the minimum value which is it is minus 13 it may be some uh, one pixel may be having a um, a local depression or a, it may be a wrong uh, value anyway um, there will be some pixels where you uh, which will be which are uh, um, which may not be having the representative value that doesn't matter much so you can check the median value also np dot median elevation you can pass on the numpy array elevations which is around uh, which is 608 meters so that is uh, uh, how you can check the values which are stored in your raster data set uh, as uh, you by reading uh, it as a numpy array and you can check the values using numpy and uh, the numpy uh, functionalities you can also plot uh, your uh, uh, raster data set in inside your Ju jupyter uh, no uh, notebook and for data for visualization purpose so from rasterio there is a in rasterio there is a sub uh, module called plot from rasterio dot plot there is an function show which you can import you can check the help option rasterio dot plot dot show it displays a raster or raster band using the matplotlib so behind the scene the uh, matplotlib is uh, um, is uh, this is working uh, while well you call this uh, function rasterio dot plot dot show so you can uh, visualize it as you have already imported the function show you can simply pass on your numpy array inside your uh, inside the function which should plot the DEM you can visualize the DEM you can also plot a histogram which will be useful uh, as you can uh, see how many pixels are falling which range of the elevations so there is another function uh, in rasterio dot plot sub module from so from rasterio dot plot import show hist again uh, it is uh, bas basically a matplot a matplotlib uh, functionality which is running in behind the scene so from rasterio dot plot import show underscore hist and then you can pass the numpy array because you have only one band there is no 
issue so you can simply pass one parameter elevations otherwise you have to specify the band number also so show underscore elevation uh, show underscore hist then you pass on the way um, numpy array which is elevations then it generates a histogram where you can find that majority of the pixels around 1.55 into 10 power 7 pixels are in the range 600 to 800 meters that was a simple introduction to rasterio third party python package for handling of raster data we have only seen how to open raster data fi uh, files and how to read raster data files as numpy arrays we have earlier seen uh, how to deal with numpy arrays uh, when we looked at numpy module uh, that was sufficient uh, uh, that 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 is sufficient enough uh, to carry out various arithmetic and uh, logical operations on uh, numpy uh, arrays so you can have a look at rasterio documentation and you can start uh, working uh, you can download uh, multispectral uh, satellite imagery today we have only dealt with srtm uh, uh, dm where we have only uh, elevation values whereas in uh, in landsat 8 and sentinel 2 uh, multispectral satellite imagery we have uh, uh, you can download uh, uh, when you download and you clip for any region of interest you will be you will uh, have access to the values of reflectance captured in various bands uh, and which uh, and in popular uh, in, a, in in the literature that many indices are defined for identification of earth uh, features uh, by doing the band math for example the popular na normalized difference vegetation index uh, uses nir and red band uh, reflectance values uh, uh, to uh, uh, do the normalized difference nir minus red by nir plus red uh, that uh, will generate a new raster data set uh, of ndvi provided you take care of the no data values and zero division uh, etc um, the issues uh, then you will have an ndvi uh, data set uh, similarly you will uh, you can generate no normalized difference vegetation uh, water index for uh, using making use of green and nir bands uh, you can uh, map the water bodies and then you can convert the raster data set uh, to vector data set and calculate the even the areas of the water body so uh, the, uh, you can uh, the, the, uh, there there are many plenty, there are uh, numerous other ways where you can uh, start uh, working with the, the basic uh, um, basic information that has been provided to you you can uh, use make use of rainfall data sets which are raster data graded data sets if they are say if they are a daily rainfall data sets you can do the summation and you can generate monthly rainfall data sets and from monthly data uh, rainfall data sets you can do the summation for, to generate annual rainfall data set uh, because uh, each uh, data set is read as a numpy array you can do simple summation in the next session on geospatial analysis using python working with raster data you will see how to work with raster data using jida library